Right. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our movie club. Today we will speak about movie The Hunt for Red October. It's a pretty old one, 1990, but I have not watched it like never. It's my first time. Uh, I'm kind of enjoyed it. It's not bad, but it's... Um, the plot is kind of twisty so we have i i, I expect we will have a few, few questions at least because the, to understand the plot so let's start from the beginning well what do you think why it's red october because in october have revolution mm -hmm. we had a revolution it's it called uh, like october's revolution on something so it's a ah. soviet union Soviet Union was created in October, and it's white red. Well, this was the 1917 revolution or a different one? Mm -hmm. This one, this one. Okay, and it's red because it was a color of uh, communist party. So that just it. So in every country, in every city in our country, we have a street that codes. Uh, that called after the October, so it's October Street <laughs> because of this, <laughs> and that's why we have sheep named after October and Samson. So Red October, it's not an ordinary sheep; it's something special. It's something like mighty, powerful, <coughs> something that we can be pr proud about. <laughs> it's, it's good to know, I guess. Okay, so let's start from the cast. Who 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 we have in the movie? Ramius. Yes, Leila. Who else? So describe who is who is Connery. He? Sean Connery. Who is he? He commander of the ship, mm -hmm. right? The Red October. <clears throat> and uh, okay, I will check Teacher Lee's notes. Wait, <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> so and what... Jake Ryan, agent, mm -hmm. and uh, there is Vasily. I. I remember his colleague on the ship, the first part of the film. And Sergey can help me. Yes, and, uh, we forgot uh, the deputy uh, of political job. That's uh, uh, Ivan Putin. And uh, <laughs> funny, funny uh, <laughs> surname. <laughs> what coincidence, right? Yeah, yeah. And analytic uh, CA. CIA uh, Jack Ryan, uh, who uh, knows about uh, submarines uh, a lot. But uh, Teacher Lee wrote he was an agent, but actually in the movie he said, I'm not an agent, I'm not trained for this, I'm just an analyst mm -hmm. or something. So you put me. Yeah. Oh, okay, data data analyst. Okay, yeah, I forgot what he was, I forgot what he was exactly. Okay. Yeah, so so the, the task for him was like overwhelming out, out of his usual boundaries or something <clears throat> challenging. Okay, so we have them. So what we give what what we know about Ramius Leila? Let's describe him a bit. I mean Ramius um, looks like a very strong person. Mm -hmm. And uh, his eyes um, are really strange for me because no emotions in his face and uh, he was talking to his colleague uh, they are discussing the cold and um they said it is really cold and time to start and i wonder what is gonna start mm -hmm. you know i, I also remember but that in the movie, they said that he was like a very experienced guy and he trained a lot of like Soviet commanders. So he and he had a but, uh -huh. he had yeah, a how we call it, relationship with a high political ranked people. So he was like a powerful man, right? I, I think it's important. And for, also, um, I watched one of the trailers and he, I mean, I don't know, he's a really good commander. He knows the manera, he knows the, you know, tactics, everything very well. But well, it's logical, right? So Soviets give them, gave them the best uh, submarine, right? So see, he must be best of the best, not just a random yeah. commander of the submarine, right? Yeah. After they talk, it is time and the submarine prepares to submerge. 
and uh, then I think the film changes scenes to a room um, in a in London. Mm -hmm. um, Alec Baldwin, I don't remember his name in the film. He was just talking to his family. Yeah, it was Jack Ryan, and he was Jack Ryan, right? Yeah. Alec Baldwin was so young, I, I have not recognized that at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, me too. I can't remember, just, you know, who is he? Mm -hmm. Okay. And he doesn't speak like Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gerard, referring to, to, to the fact that nowadays um, uh, Alec Baldwin always play Trump in this yes. Saturday Night League, or how it's called? Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Yeah, teacher Lou wrote uh, this about Ramius. So he commanded all new Russian submarine, and he is called the schoolmaster because he was a trainer for the all the commanders. Uh, mm -hmm. High quality guy. Right? So he knows he knows all the Russian commanders' weaknesses and strengths because he trained them. Yeah. Okay, so they went. How 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 we call it? They launched the mission. They went to the under the sea, right? And the interesting moment that they given they they, they opened the order after they got uh, under the sea. So, Vasans, why do you think it's so? Why they check the order after launching from the port from the base? I don't know. Maybe it's uh, because they are far from control once they are under uh, go under the sea um, nobody can uh, approach them or nobody can uh, yeah. how say yeah. detain them for not obeying the order so they yeah. just go away from the from the border yeah, it's a good idea I probably usually <laughs> remember this but uh, cold war is actually war of spies right so who knows what so the what? High security about everything. So they they open the orders when they under the sea, and nobody can like uh, can can, can, can what's the word for this? Uh, to, to tell uh, to can to leak make the signal. information. Yeah, yeah leak, leak the information. <laughs> if you tell the sailors before they go to sea, you know somebody will tell their wife, and the wife will tell their friend, and pretty soon the newspapers knows what you're going out to sea for. So, so, so they they waited until after everyone's out at sea, no phone calls, no, you know, no friends to tell. Then they open the orders at sea. So it's a security thing. Lee, it is still the same. No, but that's the Russians. We don't we don't do that in America. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess it's the same. And I read in one book that actually in this safe, in the safe that commander have, he has like three uh, different envelopes, three different orders, and he knows the number of the order like from this. Um, what so it's every operation is uh, has uh, like three options. So when we he will choose one, so it's for for fuser security. Okay. Well, that sounds that sounds dangerous to me, Ivan. What if he screws up and gets the wrong one? You know. I oh know. darn! I accidentally picked the one that was to start World War Three. Heck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I just hope they they are trained enough. To not yeah, train really. <laughs> okay, so what else? What was the mission? In like original initial mission. Mm. I don't know, to, uh, to line up with uh, other uh, Marines and everything, I think, to set that at the border. Uh, but it went last. It lost the contact with the base, I think. Then the, uh, the captain took control of the mission. He uh, guided the uh, rest of the crew uh, towards the US bar. So nobody had any idea about what was the captain was about to do. Mm -hmm. So as, as I understand the initial, as like original mission was to test this submarine because it's a new submarine. No one mm -hmm. knows what to expect from them. They, they mm -hmm. have to make some like examine for, for it. And they, they started again, you know, so one Russian submarine will play a victim, another will hunt her. 
Am I right, Julie? Yes. Uh, something you have to understand for the non-military people, submarines are a stealth weapon. They're, they go out into the ocean and they remain quiet and hidden and they sneak around like a, uh, a panther, a wildcat looking to catch prey. So quietness is their primary weapon. They hide. So in the movie here, this Red October submarine has a new kind of propulsion that moves it through the water called the caterpillar drive. And the caterpillar drive is supposed to be so quiet that enemy submarines cannot hear the submarine in the water. So this would mean the submarine, the Russians would have a deadly advantage. They could drive submarine missiles right up to the coast of the US and launch missiles right on top of us and wipe us out in five minutes. So okay. this, this new quiet Caterpillar drive is a tremendous threat to the security of the United States. So the mission was to go out and meet with another Russian submarine and to play a war game where this other submarine, the Konovalov, is that how you say it? Yep. Konovalov. The Konovalov mission was supposed to find the Red October, and the Red October is going to use the Caterpillar drive. So they're, they're testing if one submarine can listen and find the quiet Red October submarine to test if the Caterpillar drive is really so quiet it's undetectable. So that's their mission, to test this new technology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as far as I remember, Americans always were better than us in this quiet uh, thing. So their submarines were more silent than Russian submarines. So they always won this competition. That's, that was the problem for Soviet Union. That's why they, they tried to invent like new ideas and make um, less sound and all this. What sounds please? Yes, and, and I, heard, I heard that uh, the chapel they used to kill the Osama bin Laden was also quiet. You know, that's how they sneaked into the Pakistan border. Nobody could uh, know about their arrival. Yeah. You forget something important that um, at the beginning of the movie explains that something happened real for real that. I remember that in the news in 1984, a Russian submarine like uh, looked like had an accident with a nuclear reactor or something, and the crew were rescued. And here the movie is trying to make up an explanation, an explanation, no, a drama, <laughs> a plot. I, I remember this case, and there was another movie, right, about this uh, nuclear disaster. It was Kursk or something. I, I will find the link. Not, not Kursk. It was a submarine Kam Kamsamolis. Ah, Kamsamolis, says Sergei right. So we have we had another movie about uh, like a disaster with a nuclear reactor. It's also interesting and it's based on real story, yes. And uh, so, but it's it's another discussion. But but yes, it, this trick will be used in, in in this movie as well. So about uh, nuclear reactor. So we must understand that all the submarines they have. Uh, like nuclear reactor, and it adds some danger to the like uh, exploitation or how we call it, the, the user usage. Okay, so they started the mission. Gerard, what happened? Mm, so, um, Captain Ramius uh, doesn't want to follow the the, the orders, and has lands the head of Putin and kill him. So Putin was an agent uh, for the KGB or something related um, to the political party or? He, he was related to political party, yes. In, in the past, we had like a special officer who like, has another chain of command, who, whose boss is from party, not from like uh, army. Mm -hmm. he, he was, so, was he. Mm -hmm. so Putin, uh, we understand that Ramius wanted to defect to Americans. Is it because if he thought the submarine was too dangerous? So could yes. start uh, ignite a, a third world war because it's a, a too big advantage? Well, I believe, I, I believe so, because in the end of the movie, he said, 
I understand that this is a game changer. It will start the war. So it will like immediately start the war if Soviet understands that it's so much uh, advantage. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so he, he killed a political officer and changed the plan, right? And what, what was the, his new plan? To defect to the United States. But the, the problem mm -hmm. was to how, how do you make to know the Americans that he wants to defect, it's not a threat. And the Russians also are going to go after him. So it's quite difficult. And besides, most of the crew of the submarine are, uh, you know, um, faithful uh, Russians. Yep. Only I think the, the official, the officials, the officers, officers were, uh, were with uh, Captain Ramius, but not the, the crew. Yeah. It was quite difficult. Okay, so this, this, this is where it gets a little complicated, mm -hmm. okay? So initially their mission is to go out and test the Caterpillar drive, mm -hmm. okay? So they're proceeding to meet this other Russian sub to do that. And then an, a Russian admiral back on land opens a letter that Ramius left him. And the letter said, I'm going to defect to the United States. <laughs> and he spilled his tea. <laughs> so, so now th there's, there's something else going on. And yes. the Russians, so the Russians now realize that their technology is going to go over to the US and they've got to stop it. So there's two ways they have two strategies to stop Ramius. So who, who knows what the two strategies are? Let me guess. The first maybe, one, just to fight and destroy the, the submarine, right? May believe the Americans that the submarine was a threat that wanted to bomb, to nuke America. <laughs> okay. So the first strategy is the, the Russian submarine, that's the Konovalov, they told the Konovalov, you have to destroy the Red October. If that failed, the Russians had a backup plan, which Gerard, so Gerard, what was that backup plan? Yes. Yes, they, they, they said they used this plan. They told the Americans that uh, the, the submarine was a crazy captain that wanted to mute America. <laughs> okay, so the second plan was they said Ramius has gone insane and he's going <laughs> to launch nuclear missiles at the U.S. So that'll make the U.S. try to destroy him. So the Russians are trying to kill him and the U.S. is trying to kill him. <laughs> yeah. okay. So now Sean Connery is the one in his submarine again, the boss fleets of, <laughs> of U.S. and uh, Russian Navy. But if you remember in the movie, he said, I don't care about Russian Navy. I told them all. <laughs> so I, I don't care about them. <laughs> it, it was interesting. Okay, Sergey, let's go with the plot. What happens? Uh, American, uh, American government invited uh, uh, submarine analyst for uh, describing the problem uh, with Russian submarine and uh, Russian flood. And uh, when uh, during the conference uh, with uh, other uh, admirals and uh, head of uh, CAA, uh, data analysts uh, told that we have three, we have two uh, main uh, hypotheses, and uh, but I think that Romulus want to <coughs> wants to desert uh, for us, and uh, I think that it's a main uh, hypothesis for us. And uh, after that, uh, ah, other uh, participant of this conference uh, didn't uh, trust for this hypothesis. Yeah, so, mm. so U US, uh, like Navy and generals, they, they tried to understand what, the, what they have to do, right? Yeah, and uh, uh, during this conference, uh, American submarine Dallas uh, heard uh, something interesting uh, and something uh, unusual uh, sounds in uh, uh, in the sea. And uh, uh, specialist of uh, sounds told 
but we have uh, interesting sound. And when we moved this sound uh, 10 times, we uh, can we can hear uh, periodical periodical uh, peaks like an engine. Yeah, I remember what you're talking about. So it was like a natural sound in the kiosk, like a, how they... And you had your problem with mic. Okay, again, I'm sorry. Uh, I hope you, you can hear me. So uh, at the beginning, they started to think that it's some seism seismal activity, or how we call it. So some magma movement. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Seismic activity, like earthquake, yeah. Seismic activity, yeah. But when you speed up the sound, 10 times you can hear some pattern and that pattern more human made than natural so that's how they started to be suspicious right Leila why let, let, let me ask you why in the submarine they always use this sonar they always listen to the sound why do you think they do that I told it is uh, because of the um, test that a submarine should be so quiet that nobody no other ships can hear so right. Why why can they just open the window and look for another submarine there? I don't know because they are submerged under the sea. <laughs> oh, you are teasing me, right? Why the oh. submarines don't have windows? <laughs> <laughs> like in Nautilus. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But, but what I mean, it just, you know, it's just a different tactic under the water than on the water. You cannot see anything. You cannot just use uh, radars or something. You have to, uh, you, you, you actually are blind. So you have to use some ultrasonic devices and these people who, how we call those, those people actually who, who see We just call them sonar technicians. Yeah, and sonar technicians, they became to be like uh, heroes, right? They are very important for the, <laughs> for the whole board. Yeah, they, they are looking for this. And there was a black Why? guy. Really? Uh, can they see just through the goggles? <laughs> no. No? The periscope can't be used deep underwater. It's only good when you're within 60 feet of the surface. The periscope oh. is, is not good for deep sea pressure. So when you're deep, you can't see. You're 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 literally driving a car like this. Okay. You, you know so you're because, yeah. Because what when you see when when we are using our, our eyes, what can we see? We see like sun, right? Light lights. But under the, under the water, there is no lights at all, so you cannot see anything. You even even if you have a window, you cannot see. <laughs> you cannot just start on the lights because you will be detected. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Yes, it is. It is reasonable why they don't use glass windows like aer aeroplanes. You know, uh, underwater it has a lot of pressure when you go deeper, so uh, it might uh, break the glass windows and and in the air comparing to the airplanes in the air you would not expect a whale or anything bigger uh, in the air you know just a few crows or doves and birds you know um, but underwater you can even counter uh, encounter an, a whale so it would be dangerous if it pumps into the um, glass and it will break up and it would be, uh, how to say that? Is that a collateral damage or something? Uh, disastrous. So yeah, un underwater glass, we have pretty strong glass, but uh, a thumb rule is every 100 feet of water adds about 44 pounds per square inch of pressure. So if you're at a thousand feet, that's 10 times 44 or 440 pounds per square inch. So as you go deeper, the pressure trying to crush in on the submarine gets greater and greater. And then if there's a depth charge or a torpedo explosion, that explosion also increases the pressure waves in the water. So if you had glass windows, that pressure could shatter the glass. So submarine hulls are all metal, very strong. Uh, 
So literally, it's hard to imagine, but a submarine is literally driving around blind underwater, <laughs> hoping that your maps tell you where all the mountains are so you don't hit a mountain or run into the bottom. <laughs> It's so it's pretty from, scary. You're you're dependent yeah. on a map to drive underwater blind. Yeah, and it happens from time to time. And let let, let me try to explain like uh, about uh, from the point of view of physics. So the, the hull, hull, right? We we call it a hull, like a hull, um, hull, yep. Hull. The hull of the boat made of metal, and metal, you know, it can be like flexible. So you can you can squash it. And then it will be back, but glass cannot be like uh, yeah flexible, mm -hmm. so it will ah, be shattered. Good point. Good point. Yeah, <laughs> excellent point. I didn't even think about that. There are submarines named Batiska, you know, for ocean exploration that they can go very deep and they have glass, but I don't know. Maybe they are they are smaller. They they are, they are small and they uh, they are spherical. A spherical, yes. It's 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 kind of different because when you spherical, you can. Um, bear a lot of uh, pressure yes. mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and it may be that the glass has kind mm -hmm. of a rubber gasket where the rubber gasket can expand or contract and maintain the seal i'm not sure how they do that yeah okay so now we understand the importance <laughs> well could you mute please i, I can hear echo from you so uh, uh now we understand the importance of this sonar techniques, right? So because the whole board depends on how good they are to detect uh, what they hear, right? And we have this black guy who is proficient in music, who is uh, experienced, who has a lot of years on this submarine. And and when computers say it, it's just a natural sound, nothing, nothing is... Uh, uh, wrong with it, he was suspicious, right? He started to <laughs> listen again and again and again. And actually, Americans got lucky. So Caterpillar drive, it's not a, not something that they cannot, um, what's the word for this? They cannot uh, detect, right? So actually, it did yeah. not work. <laughs> now, let me, let me mention something else. There's two kinds of sonar. We call it active sonar and passive sonar, just like grammar, active voice and passive voice. In active sonar, that's what a bat uses when it flies at nighttime. A bat can ping out sound, and when the sound hits something, the sound bounces back. And based on the sound reflecting back to the bat's ear, it can say, oh, there's something over there, and it's this far away. But when you do that, if that's called active sonar, when you ping out a noise, other submarines can hear your ping, 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 and they know exactly where you are. So you know exactly where they are, but if you, if you ping to know exactly where they are, they also hear your ping and they know exactly where you are. So submarines do not normally use active sonar we use what we call passive sonar, which is you just listen. Sir, I hear something. Oh, it's a whale song, Never mind. you know. <laughs> so, just... so normally the submarines are just, they're blind and they're just listening and they have no idea what's out there. If a mountain doesn't make noise, you won't see, you won't know it's there and you'll run right into it. And you know, there is an interesting fact. We always say about, you know, uh, this artificial intelligence and computers and technology, but still people do this job better than any computers. So still people, people can be high trained for this and can understand, you know, I hear that this submarine changed in direction. <laughs> I hear that the whale is singing for the dolphin or something, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Asad, please. Yeah. Uh, technology always does its job effectively, but it depends on the human who is using it uh, perfectly. Because uh, even though you may have a, a strong password, but if you write it down on, on your diary, it is vulnerable. So just like that, even though you have a caterpillar, you must shut your mouth, you know, if you sing along with your friends or colleagues and they would hear that. 
Yeah. Thank you, Vasant. It's another excellent <laughs> point. So, you know, uh, as Tichely said uh, about this, um, like, passive listening, you you know, uh, in another movies, for instance, a German movie, Sub or something, you can hear that there is a silent mode in the... Um, in the submarine, no one, no one can drink a cup of tea, you know, in silent mode. But what they do in Russian submarine, Sergey? Do you remember? <laughs> uh, I don't remember. I I remember this movie. Uh, the name is Das Boot, the yes. ger uh, German, and uh, I remember the moment when uh, they uh, stopped uh, making something, and the Russian submarine uh, listened, and someone. Maybe uh, someone uh, I, I don't know uh, a cup of a cup of uh, perception caps yeah. and, and so so yeah we are, we are talking about another movie does boat or something and there was a duel between two submarines and both were silent and then one guy just you know sip his coffee or something or drop the pen and they said yes there is someone. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fascinating. But in this movie, The Hunt for Red October, what Russians do when they are in silent mode? They, they are singing the song. And and I think Ramius knew they shouldn't do it, but he I think he wanted to be detected, so he didn't stop it. But yeah, that was pretty bad. Yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> Um, I, I can't believe I'll, I'll mention something to you, okay? Um, I was on a submarine, so we had uh, an order called Rig for Silent Running. And this is when you think there's another sub, an enemy submarine in the area. So you, you, everyone throughout the whole ship, when you say Rig for Silent Running, everyone does certain things. So um, when you there's a lot of ladders on a submarine. So you climb up a ladder. So a lot of people will slide down the ladder and, and kind of land on the deck. When you're rigged for silent running, you can't do that. You've got to step down the ladder very quietly and softly step on the deck. you got to be careful. You don't even stir your, your coffee with a spoon because <laughs> that might be any metal sound immediately goes out through the water. So you can't, tap any metal with another piece of metal. You can't, you got to set your dishes down very quiet. Uh, some, some pumps have make more noise than other pumps. So you might actually start a quieter pump and turn off the noisier pump. So it's very detailed what you do to make your submarine as quiet as possible. Um, the submarine says a nickname for the submarine service. We're called the silent service mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because our survival depends on silence. <laughs> yes, that's why I was so surprised by this scene. This... Let, let, let me ask yeah. you, Sergei, how many times you sunk, you sunk during your military service? <laughs> mm, I... No, zero, zero, <laughs> yes. And uh, in 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 my uh, military service, we sung the popular uh, song when we uh, uh, when we uh, go to, mm -hmm. from when when we marched uh, from our uh, location to canteen. And uh, it's a popular. It's not a, a military song. It's a popular uh, change in song. Yeah, but uh, I'm referring to this, you know, in Hollywood movies, Russians, military guys, they always sing, you know, this song. So <laughs> I always wonder why, why? I never heard it in real life. Yeah. They were celebrating, <laughs> I guess, right? They were celebrating something. Yeah. Okay, can I ask you something? <clears throat> I'm really interested in that subject, so I just want to learn. So you say if somebody drops the pen, some... Uh, the other people can hear two different submarines, right? Okay, I wonder how much time the speed of sound will reach. It's, it's oh. in instantaneous almost. Really? Uh, under yeah, under wow. the water, the, the speed of the sound is very fast. Sound water. travels very fast through water yeah. because the molecules are close oh, together. Yeah. So, do, um, could be far away, no problem. No problem. 
possibly a mile away or maybe even longer yeah okay yeah, the, thank you it's very sensitive yeah i read somewhere i'm not sure that it's it's right information but i read somewhere that uh, modern sonars they work for 10 kilometers or something so it's a huge wow. distance wow wow yeah like medieval medieval seas of whole right <laughs> the whole medieval sea so if you're rigged for silent, you can't play any movies. You got to turn off the music. You got to whisper to each other. You can't shout. So you got to wow. be very quiet. So it's kind of boring. Even, when you, uh, even you can't whisper. Wow. We, we, can, we can. can whisper, but we can't talk normal voice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, please, your question. Yes, uh, there is a possibility that once he found out that caterpillar, caterpillar uh, stop the signals the vibrations from uh, reaching uh, the u.s marine uh, u.s ships uh, then he let them sing to push it a little bit further to know that the caterpillar blocks the his their singing signals too i'm not sure but it could be the reason so you are thinking that it was intentionally, right? He let them yeah. sing intentionally. Yeah, let them sing. Yeah, let's uh, to know that the U.S. Um, submarine finds out our movement. You know, or the caterpillar is more effective, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Or maybe he wanted the U.S. to detect him, so the U.S. was alerted. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gerard, please. Gerard, you're muted. We can hear. Uh, I wanted to ask, what's more noisy in a submarine at this time, the rotation of the blades? That's, that's the most significant noise. And it's, uh, what's especially critical is sometimes when you change speed, when that propeller initially speeds up, it'll make bubbles in the water. And we call that cavitation. And that's like, rocks in a cement mixer. Mm -hmm. Another submarine can detect that immediately. <laughs> so when you change speed, you've got to change speed very slowly so that the propeller doesn't make bubbles around the edge of the propeller when it speeds up. Yeah. And speaking about yeah. physics again, when you when you switch on the kettle, when water is about to boil, do you remember this moment? There is a lot of noise in the kettle. And, and why? Because there are the small bottles, small small bubbles, and the and the on the bottom, and when they go up, water squashes them. So you you can hear a lot of sound yeah. bef before yeah. it boils, and it, it's, that's yeah. exactly cavitation. What 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 makes uh, sound? Yeah. Now the cavitation underwater is not caused by boiling, but what happens is, as the propeller blades move around in a circle, the very tip of the blade is going so fast. It causes a low pressure area. And as that, that low pressure area at the end of the blades allows a little bit of an air bubble to form. And then the pressure immediately collapses it, like Yvonne said. So those little bubbles forming and collapsing at the tips of the blades is what causes cavitation. So you got to be very careful how you change speed so you don't create bubbles. Wow. Yeah, so, so to be silent, it's a really hard task, really tough task for everyone, for engineers who, who made the board, for commanders who control the board, for everyone, for crew. Yeah, so it's yeah. not easy. And even, even changing depth. When you go up and down in the ocean, when you go down, the sea pressure actually crushes your hull smaller and smaller. So the metal goes... So when you go up and down your hull is going to make noise. So you've got to be careful to keep your speed changes slow. You can't change depth because any change in sea pressure, your, your metal noise, metal deck will make noise as it. Every, yeah, everything is detectable. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. in the movie they said open the covers of rocket launcher and they say, I hear, I hear this, right? So rockets are ready. Yeah, just opening your opening your torpedo doors or your missile doors. <laughs> you know, they can hear that noise. He's opening torpedo tubes. 
He's opening missile missile covers. You know? <laughs> Some one yeah. drinking the coffee. Two sugars, one milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. It's weird. Uh, okay, I forgot where we where we were. Um, let's start from somewhere. <laughs> Sergey, singing. Please? We're talking about singing, I think. <laughs> Sergey. <laughs> I want to no notice uh, that the uh, uh, listening specialist uh, uh, have to be very attentionally and uh, permanently when he has uh, a shift uh, for li listening. I think it's a very, very important job. And it's a very, very nervous job because you have to change some uh, different uh, different voices different sounds i don't know how uh, who and how uh, prepared the specialist for uh, submarine and maybe it's a uh, musician but it's too difficult to understand for me it's a challenging job, but I think people adapt to everything, you know, people adapt to any hard job, you know, firefighters, you know, many, many like occupations have a lot of demands. So probably sonar techniques, something one, one in the row to, to another challenging uh, occupations. But there, there is one thing, you know, when we, we get older, we lose our hearing skills, especially high pitch frequencies, mm -hmm. you know, usually, uh, it's said that we can hear up to 20, um, 20,000 ki kilo, 20 kilohertz, ki kilo mm -hmm. but we were the age we are losing this frequency, maybe, you know, decreasing, is decreasing. And I don't know whether a specialist, a sonar specialist can be too old, or how old can be. Yeah. Well, I guess nowadays we have, you know, many techniques, many technologies, so they can, I think, change the signal or something change the like the, the sound maybe i don't know so the, the, your job just to hear the pattern not the like real uh, mm -hmm. range i guess but i'm not yeah, yeah. submarines as as gerard mentioned the propulsion the the propeller going through the water the engines that drive the propellers that's the main noise source so diesel submarines that don't use steam that only use electric are very quiet, but they can't go very far. Submarines, they actually can record a submarine's engine noise and they can measure the frequency of the sound it makes. And it's like a fingerprint. They can listen to a submarine's frequency signal and they can match that against fingerprints and say, oh, that's the Red October submarine out there in the water. So. Uh, it's a science. It's a real science. Okay, let's now let, go. Okay, I, I was going to mention something. Now, we, we know at some point there's going to be a submarine battle yep. between the Kanavalov and the Red October. And let me tell you something about torpedoes. A torpedo is like a missile that goes underwater. It has an explosive uh, warhead on the end. There's two ways we can detonate a torpedo, by contact or by proximity. If it gets close to metal, it will detect a change in the magnetic field, and it can blow up maybe 10 feet away from the submarine hull. So proximity or nearness or contact. The, so the torpedo also has active sonar. It can actually ping into the water and search in an S pattern. And if it detects your submarine, and you blow up. Now, when you're on a submarine, we do. We, when you're on a submarine, you can hear this torpedo pinging in the water, and it sounds kind of like. So when it starts doing this, you're dead. <laughs> so so um, if you're not careful when you launch a torpedo, it could possibly detect you. When it, when it starts snaking, it could detect you. 
So what we have is we have a what we call a, an arming, a safe arming distance. We don't turn on the torpedo until it's some minimum distance from the submarine, say 500 yards. So for the first 500 yards, it can't blow up and it doesn't search. It just goes in a straight line. And after it reaches that 500 yards, then it turns on and starts searching. So if you're 400 yards away and someone shoots that torpedo at you and it hits you, it won't do anything because it hasn't turned on yet. But if you're a thousand yards away at 500 yards, it'll turn on and it's armed and searching. And if it hits you after that, you'll blow up. So uh, the, the commander, Res Re Ramius, uses this knowledge in this battle between these two submarines. Do you remember how he used that knowledge? Anyone remember? Yeah, I remember he uh, like changed the direction towards the torpedo and closed the distance. So, yeah. Okay. So when the, the, the Novolov shoots a torpedo at the Red October, everyone expected him to try to run. Mm -hmm. But then that torpedo would pass that safe distance and turn on and it would get him. So he used a strategy, he says, turn towards the torpedo and he got to the torpedo before it turned on. So when it hit the hull, it bounced off. So, yeah. so Ramius knew that the submarine commander would just realize his mistake. And he said, now he's gonna set that distance to zero. So the torpedo turns on immediately. <laughs> <laughs> And then he tricked the guy into driving in front of his torpedo. <laughs> and then his own torpedo detected him and he blew himself up. <laughs> and I remember that American submarine Dallas or what is his, 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 his I think, name? I think Dallas, yeah. Yeah, uh, helped as well in, in this battle some, somehow. Uh, yeah. Okay, I, I think we... we... We, we cannot follow all the details in this plot because we almost run out of time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's try just, and it's understandable because it's a, like a complex subject about this movie. And there are a lot of details, political and technical and submarines yeah. and plot, so everything. So let's ask someone, Gerard, let me, let me challenge you with, <laughs> try to make some summary for the plot, if you can. Hmm. Okay. So the Red October, uh, it's a submarine that can be uh, go to the United States without making noise, and it's a very advanced strategy weapon that can change the you know the Cold War to uh, give a lot of advantages to the U the Soviets, and that's the reason the cap the captain the sum of the submarine Remus commander, but I think it's cap cap it's the captain. Uh, wants to defect, and his mission is to avoid being hunted by by the Americans, uh, both the Americans and the Russians. So that's the the, the goal of the of the movie, and he eventually uh, and achieves his goal. And we um, with uh, with doing with with doing with deceiving his crew because <laughs> the. With a ruse, uh, he, uh, the crew was out of the submarine, pretending that had an accident. And mm -hmm. then he recovered the submarine and gave the submarine to the Americans in a, a hidden place. So the Russians couldn't detect it by watching with satellites. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of challenges in his uh, <laughs> task, right? He, uh, he should made everything in secret, right? Because if Soviets knew that Americans got the ship, they just demand the ship back, right? Mm -hmm. So they tried to make this secretly. Another thing that only a few officers was, were defected, not the whole crew. So, mm -hmm. and he did not want to, I don't know, to kill the crew, right? Or to make something mm -hmm. terrible. So he need to find a way. Another way is uh, to let Americans to understand that he is going to defect because mm -hmm. he was about to shoot them, him. And it's uh, just an occasion that it did not happen, I guess. So it was a 
hard task. Okay, we have, uh, I, I guess, um, <laughs> we, can, we can follow deeper in the details, but we can share a few uh, favorite lines if you like. And we have uh, four questions from our Padlet, so we can answer them. So let me ask uh, Vova. Vova, what is your favorite line? What is your favorite moment in the movie or something? What did you like? I like... Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay, you, you can see more. Yeah, I give you time. So let's ask Sergey. Sergey, what is your favorite line in the movie? What, what do you Unfortunately, like? I didn't uh, watch the movie. The, I didn't finish to watch the movie. And I ah. finished only one part of the movie. Ah, okay, so you 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 still you have a pleasure if you want. Okay, good. Not told me the story, please. <laughs> spoiler. <laughs> it's it's what we did, Sergey. No, no spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> Actually, I like it. I, I I like it in the movie. A part with uh, some humor, uh, you know. So so this guy Ryan or what he was his name. He he was. Uh, he was he did not like to fly but he need to fly constantly like you know and i like it the moment when he decided to make a almost a sacrifice he jumped from this helicopter and it was pretty risky in my opinion because yeah. they said you have four minutes in this water and i guess it's four minutes for you know it can be three or two you never know so, so, so it's it's the moment that i like it he was so dedicated so like brave and everything Leila, what uh, is your what is your favorite moment Ivan, I think I like the way he he talked, Sean Connery, I mean Ray Mills. He tricked the <clears throat> other commander, the submarines commander. He said, um, he can't say just, you know, I can't trick him again because he did understand my strategy now. I like that. <laughs> Sergey, please. Yes, I like the moment when uh, Ramos uh, described uh, uh, what he did before our trip, and he sent uh, an, an email, an mail, uh, a mail for uh, Admiral for de describing this position that uh, he wanted to desert, and uh, he compared uh, this situation with Cortez and the Conquistadors. I, I remember this moment. It was it was nice. Yes, they said, "Why you send this mail? It makes us our mission so much harder." And he said, "You know, <laughs> at least we have some motivation now." <laughs> can't go back. Yeah, can't go back. Yeah, Russian way. We call it Brazilian system. Once I told you that. <laughs> you like, you like to do this. <laughs> what is your favorite moment? Yeah, but when the politician said. Talked to Ryan, he said that I'm a politician. When I don't kiss children, I'm stealing their lollipops. That was a funny one. <laughs> I remember. I'm a politician, as it's by definition, me it's an, I'm a liar and something else. <laughs> and I still kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. I also remember that there was a Russian like ambassador and this politician, mm -hmm. and the dialogue was pretty nice. Like, <laughs> I remember this. Okay, let's answer a few questions. So, uh, and, uh, first one, um, let me copy there. So, just read, is Ramius a double agent? Can we call him a double agent? Sergey, what do you think? Uh, double agent is a person who worked to uh, two uh, special agency, for example, to USA and to uh, Russia. And uh, to Russia, he has... Uh, information and he went to CAA. Oh, I have new mail for you. Yeah, actually, as I understand the double agent is an agent that was who was defective, right? He was sent by, by agent, but actually he now works for another site. So I don't think that Ramos is an agent. He, he was officially he wasn't. Now, if he was being paid by the US, Mm -hmm. to be a Russian com a Soviet commander to steal the submarine, that's a double agent because he's really working for the enemy side. Mm -hmm. But in this case, he wasn't 
really working for the enemy side. He was he was working for him, but they didn't know it, and they weren't paying him for it. So he was unofficially a double he, agent. He actually worked for his own beliefs, right? He believed that he doing something good. Right. Go moment. Mm, my favorite one moment is when when they singing in in the submarine. Singing the submarine, yeah, it's, it's a nice one. <laughs> uh, okay, another question. Uh, are they allowed? Uh, was probably was they? Are they allowed to smoke inside of the submarine? <laughs> well, won't they suffocate after the oxygen got exhausted? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's surprising. Yes. <laughs> Actually, is it a, is it possible to smoke? Yeah, we smoke. No, um, we submarines have an atmosphere control system mm -hmm. that filters the air. I was in charge of that. We had a <laughs> an, a piece of equipment that it could measure the CO2 in the air, the CO in the air, and other gases in the air. And we actually have machines on board that can uh, kind of recycle the air and filter out CO2. So if the CO2 gets too high from people breathing mm -hmm. and smoking, we have machines that can take that out of the air and keep the air clean. Oh, As okay. we Uh, as we breathe the oxygen inside a submarine, we actually have pressurized oxygen tanks mm -hmm. and we can release oxygen into the atmosphere. So mm -hmm. submarines can precisely control the quality of the air in a submarine. Yeah. So technology solves this problem, it seems. We also okay. made our own water by taking seawater Mm -hmm. and using electricity to separate H2O into H2 and O2. So we made our own oxygen from seawater. Wow. So we had oxygen making machines and CO2 removing machines. <laughs> I see. Okay, the last question before we, we start slides. So why do the Russians want to kill Captain Ramos? Leila, what do you think? Why? The civil, evil that was, I think he was allegedly, you know, just informed by the USA people that he's going to launch a rockets, right? To USA. Not really. It was a legend. It was a, not a real, like... That's, 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 a, that's a different plot. That's why the Americans wanted to kill the Red October. <laughs> okay, Lee, help me. Why? Because he was a traitor, Leila, because he, it's not something you like when someone from your country, <laughs> your commander, bring your submarine to, to another side. Mm -hmm. Remember, okay, yeah. Rem yeah, Lee, I'm remember, listening to you. Remember the Caterpillar drive was new technology for the Soviets yep. that gave them an advantage, a military advantage over the Americans. Ramius was going to take that technology and give it to the Americans. Okay. Did so he the Russians ask, wanted to yeah. stop that. Yeah. Did he seek asylum from uh, USA? Essentially, yeah. yes. He would stay in the USA after he did this. Okay. Now and, I got it. Right. And the, re and the reason he decided to defect was because, I forget exactly how, but his wife had died. The Soviets had allowed or caused his wife to die, so he was bitter about how his wife died. So that was another reason that he chose to defect. So it's the kind of revenge, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thank let's, you. Let's let's make a few slides slides in, in the rest of the time. And Leila, how would you describe these letters with Red October? <laughs> And we lost her, I guess. Okay, let me ask Vova. Vova, what do you think about these letters? What they are doing? Red October. See. Mm. Mm. The, the sinking, right? Sorry, the... I'm here. <laughs> 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 hello, hello again. 
You said Leila. <laughs> well, and yes. I, I, I here, was, sir. Yes. I was about to ask you what what these letters on the poster doing. <laughs> What, what, I mean, mm -hmm. it is so meaningful, right? How would you how would you describe it? You know, the first thing is, uh, red always attracts me a lot, but red has got a lot of meanings, as you have said before. Um, it's a kind of political meaning. It's a kind of anger. It's a kind of revenge. So if I didn't know anything about the film's plot, I could say either rage or anger or politics. I don't know, mm -hmm. but it gives me a hint. What, what he's asking is the font. If you look at the font of the letters, the hunt for. I those, love it. Those are like they're, com it. They're, they're coming up out of the water like a periscope. Mm -hmm. The red October. Okay. Is going underwater like a submarine. Yes, it is sinking, right? <laughs> but believe me, I I haven't focused on that. <laughs> okay, we can I, I'm just just looking at the colors, Ivan. Okay, okay, okay. Let's start with this one. Bova, could you please start? The Mister Ryan. Uh, fly to uh, fly to the um, United, the United States, right? Yes, the United States. Mm -hmm. um, and this is his boss. Yeah, probably some general from CIA. I, I don't remember his name. Okay, well, what what else we can see? The uh, teacher Liv wrote a lot uh, in the chat. So open briefcase, so they're discussing some case, right? Some papers for this, I guess. Uh, old fashioned phone. And I like this pictures on the wall. Can you see them? It's something, something ancient, it looks for me. <laughs> some, how we call this? Some monsters from the water. I guess, yeah, sea monsters. Sea monsters, yeah. I'll, I'll mention this kind of phone. Before this phone, we had the rotary dial, right? Click, 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 This phone was the first phone that had frequencies. Beep, 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 beep. So we call it touch tone. Beep, 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 beep. So it's called a touch tone phone. In Russia, we call first first type dial tone and another tone. So dial and tone, dial make clicks. Dial, <laughs> dial and tone, okay. Yes, and tone make like sounds, different frequency. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe have a rotary dial. I have touch. Yeah, we call it rotary dial because it goes around. We call the t t t t t impulses. The rotary kind, the computer counted the clicks. Mm -hmm. You know, if you dial nine, it clicks nine times going back. If you dial seven, it clicks seven times going back. Yeah. So it used to count clicks, but, and then the tone looks at the frequency. <laughs> there are a lot of jokes and anecdotes about this. You know, it's, it's like someone is calling you and asking, "Is it? it is it? It's number nine 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 nine? Yes." Mm -hmm. it, Please call the emergency. I have my finger in nine, uh, stuck it in the nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I cannot dial another number. <laughs> okay, let's, let's go to another one. Uh, <laughs> Gerard, could you please describe this one? Uh, here we can see uh, Captain Ramius burning the orders that the real ones. Um, okay. We can see uh, his, dinner, I think his dinner because we, we can see in, a mo in this scene that he was uh, eating while talking at the same time, uh, drinking, I guess, wine with very. It's, uh, it's tea. We never drink wine. Uh, tea. <laughs> but how do you call this tea in Russian? I think this is a special name. Uh, no, just tea, but uh, you, you can notice that we 
always have like different we drink uh, tea not from uh, cups but it's uh, different we have glasses and metal holder metal holder for glasses so it's yeah, always like yeah 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 <laughs> on, on the on the me all the military services use them cup holder yeah for this ah, okay and, and this metal glasses they sometimes made of silver or some i don't know gold maybe with some stone so they are like decorative in in our uh russian uh russian railway service we have a metal holder everywhere we don't have a cap and uh, from uh 14 year 14th years of 20th century for till till now and we have uh glass and we have metal holder yeah it's, a, wow. it's like kind of an old tradition i don't know yeah, yeah we don't we don't have that okay <laughs> so it's an interchangeable you can change the glass i don't know why we have this but it's like an old tradition yeah okay what else so he had a lot of medals right and uh Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, nothing else. Okay, let, let, let's go forward. What sounds? What about this one? Who is this guy? This guy is an expert. He met him in the construction site of a submarine. So he went there to check the photographs of the newly built Russian submarine. So about the caterpillar hole, it was unprecedented technology, I think. Mm -hmm. um, the hole was not found in any other uh, submarine. So it was new to them. Uh, so he asked him, the expert and he is examining the holes and interpreting his uh, Uh, his opinion um, and we can see the photographs of the submarine and a table lamp um, a file holder yeah. a crate, do, do, a do crate. you remember the, di the dialogue that they have oh yes I remember that because uh, he was reminiscing his uh, childhood experience you know yeah. when yeah, somebody uh, got a, a dozen Mm -hmm. um, missile, I think. Uh, I don't know. Missile or something, a weapon. Um, and in the US coast, his father uh, decided to build a bunk. Is that, is that a bunker? It's a bomb shelter or something. Yeah, I bomb guess. shelter. It was, it, was, it, it was interesting. He said, when I was a child, I was making, uh, I was helping my father to make a bomb shelter because Soviets put their missiles on the Cuba. But now, now <laughs> these missiles will be like two meters away, 100 meters away from me, and this bomb shelter <laughs> will, will not help me. Sergey, <laughs> 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 yes? Sergey, you're muted. Sergey, you're muted. We don't hear. <laughs> Sergey, you're muted. Please start, start, yeah, start yeah, again. Sure. Uh, in the center of photo, we can see uh, glasses with pens. And uh, I know that uh, in submarines, uh, people use pens uh, for uh, making, uh, making write, uh, for writing in ship log. Because uh, in water, uh, graphite uh, words not uh, damaged, right? not, not changed. Not disappear, right? So we, yeah, if yeah. you write not with a, yeah. yeah, if you write with ink, it can be changed after it it gets wet, right? Usually, do, you don't have this, right? Now we use ink. Okay, so <laughs> so in Russian submarines we use pe pencils just to, I don't know, to add more chances to let it untouch it in case of danger or something. In case of <laughs> it, it gets okay. wet. Okay. Interesting. All right. All right. <laughs> Okay, let me okay, let me stop there. Sergey, have you please can you please describe this one? It looks like a bunker, yeah. but I think it uh, it's uh, C A C A A C I A. C -A. C -A. Actually, how we pronounce how we pronounce this? C I A? C I A. Yeah, okay. C I A. And in the center photo uh, we can see data analysis 
uh, on the bus sides, uh, uh, there are four or five uh, sculptures of uh, maybe former leader of CIA. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, in the left of photo, uh, a person who checked uh, documents and permission and uh, uh, who is who and uh, put rights uh, in the lock. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the uh, right side of photo, we can see the boss of uh, data analysis and a red carpet, a red carpet road, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Kishli, who are these uh, people, <laughs> metal people? <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, no, look like little busts of people. I don't know who they are. <laughs> okay. To be honest, uh, this uh, uh, this bunker bunker looks like a Soviet Union uh, style. <laughs> Absolutely. I've never seen that design before, so. <laughs> yeah. I, can never, I, I cannot tell because I, I, I never have been in Soviet bunker. Okay, so this is a Russian admiral, so the one who is in charge of the whole fleet, who has a direct line to the president, <laughs> and who sends the whole fleet to find uh, Red October, right? And he got uh, the letter from this um, captain, and I'm looking on this uh, on on his tape. First of all, first of all, it's interesting that. Uh, he has a Lenin's photo on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Vasal, do you know who is Lenin? <laughs> yes, I have read about him. <laughs> okay, so so uh, it's not uh, pretty accurate. You know, uh, uh, probably we we change this photo, so it must be like current president, not the former one. <laughs> so, so, so Lenin was was dead at that moment. Okay, what else? Uh, it's interesting that he has uh, some sculpture on the right, and it looks like a bear to me. <laughs> bear with some toys. <laughs> it's it's plausible. But what is in the center? It looks like katana or something. Sergey, what is this? Sergey. Yes, it's katana. Uh, looks like it's not uh, a Russian, uh, yeah, a Russian table. <laughs> Yeah, it's impossible to have something Japanese on the on yeah, the yeah. table of Russian admiral. Yeah. The interesting moment: the admiral uh, put on uh, not armor armor uniform. It's impossible. Yeah, another thing. Yeah, it's uh, it's a fake because uh, uh, <laughs> armored people uh, put people. on uniform everywhere and every time. Yeah. Yeah, so, so yes, usually you are right. We don't put, usually we don't put medals on uh, civilian clothes and Russian military guys, they are not allowed to wear military clothes. So he must be in the, his uniform. So if he's an admiral or general, he must wear uniform. So it's not accurate. And uh, katanas for the most impossible. This egg mm, or globe, I, I don't know. I never saw this, but the but the sink on the left of the, this he, it's egg. Do you know what is this? <laughs> is that a stamp or? Yeah, a... it's a, it's a... yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> we still use them. This is this is pretty pretty accurate. <laughs> Rubber stamp. Yeah, a phone, some eagles that hold some books, and on the right, Sergey, is it accurate flag? What do you think? Yeah, it's a marine flag. Navy flag. Um, we we call them Andreevsky, Andrian, and Andrei, Andrei, Andrei Vasilyevsky. Yeah, yeah. So it's Andrei a navy flag. I, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> we have two different two different like uh, symbols. One for country, another for navy. Okay, let me skip a few. So Ryan presenting. Uh, let's stop on this one. Gerard, could you please describe this one? Oh, okay. This guy is the specialist in sonar. Mm -hmm. um, he detects, he detected the pattern of the Red October by uh, speeding the, um, the recording of the sound. We can, he can hear the uh, pattern. And the noise, ping, 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 ping. I really, I know that no, it's not natural. That's a uh, homemade noise. Okay, now I don't know what to say. The computer, the screen of the computer at this time. Like yeah. here, we can see something that looks like toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to, <laughs> to point attention to this. Yeah, to pay attention to this. Yeah. Uh, 
So, uh, Gerard, did you have these uh, magnetic tapes when you was young? Yeah, a lot, <laughs> but at this time, cassettes existed. Cassette? Cassettes, you know, there's more yeah, than I, one. I started with these big, uh, like, rings, I don't know how we talk them, and then cassettes in a few years, but it was, it was not a reliable technique, as I remember, as I've always need to, <laughs> to repair something. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a kind of writing pen, we call a grease pencil. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a piece of uh, a long piece of wax. Mm -hmm. It's usually black and you can write on glass with it. So uh, when we have a glass surface, we can use a grease pencil to write on the glass and to remove it, you have to get paper and, and rub the wax off. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really kind of a wax pencil, but we call it a grease pencil. So this paper is to wipe off the grease pencil marks that they make on their glass screens. Uh, I understand that, yeah. They and, don't and go to the bathroom inside there. <laughs> 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 and I remember in the movie, they said that computer that they used for uh, like sound detection, he cost uh, $35 million or something like this. It was in the movie, so <laughs> some abnormal... <laughs> price for a computer uh, okay Vasans, do you remember this can you describe yes this is this is where the captain was having a private meeting with the crew mm -hmm. and his assistant i don't know his designation but he uh, intentionally asked the doctor to step away from the room so that they can have a chat he was blabbering and he was not interested. He might be, uh, how to say that? I don't know the characters. No. So all these officers, they are, all, all of them, they are traitors, right? They are defectors. But mm -hmm. except the doctor. Doctor was not uh, in this like plot. So they sent him away by, by saying, doctor, we need all your radiation reports from this day and previous days. Please do it. <laughs> now, on a, on a submarine, the officers eat separately from the enlisted men, the lower level soldier, mm -hmm. sailors. This wardroom, there's a small room called the wardroom. That's for officers only. Mm -hmm. And we do our meetings in there and we eat in the wardroom. The Navy is very traditional. So we have real silverware. The, the silver is real silver. So it's heavy and you got to shine it all the time. Um, when we go to sit, the captain we can't, we stand at the table. We can't sit until the captain comes in and sits. And after he sits, then we can sit. But we can't eat yet until the captain takes the first soup. Once mm -hmm. he tastes his soup, then we're allowed to begin eating. <laughs> if we need to leave, we have to say, Captain, may I be excused? And we need permission to leave the table to go on watch. So it's all very formal bullshit. I hated being an officer. <laughs> uh. But I, 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 actually, what is not plausible in this movie? So there are like seven, eight, eight officers from the same submarine. So, and all of them are defectors. And Sergey, can you find this plausible in Soviet time? that eight officers can secretly make a plan to defect to America? I no think it's will... not impossible because uh, we have a KGB and we have a uh, uh, protocol and we have uh, one politician officer and uh, they have a conversation about something, but it's, it's impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. Because as teacher says, main... mm -hmm. says, Captain cannot like choose the officer. They will be... No. Uh, they, they, they will be uh, yeah. like ordered. Yeah. And the interesting moment, uh, the captain of this submarine, uh, Lithuanian, mm -hmm. I uh, think that it's impossible in Soviet Union because Lithuania, 
uh, Litva is a small republic of, uh, uh, it was a small republic in Soviet Union and the people of Lit Litva uh, didn't like Russian and Soviet Union so much. And Soviet Union uh, army uh, don't took the Lithuanian captain. Yeah, it's, I understand. It's, it was another subplot in the movie. So they said he's a not real Russian, but at the same time, Russians give him the best submarine. So it's, it doesn't look plausible. It's like, literally, you know, it's, if, if uh, China will uh, make an officer in charge someone, someone from Uyghurs, you know, so you are now the main. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we know you are not real, reliable, that's why we give you the best weapon. Just mm -hmm. you know, use it as you wish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's find something else. Wow, I remember this. We forgot to describe this, right? Sergey, can you please? What happened? Yeah, the avia, uh, the ship with the uh, aircraft. Aircraft. <laughs> yeah, it's a, the ship with aircrafts, and uh, uh, we can see the moment when. Uh, uh, fly uh, put on the uh, line of this uh, ship and uh, a lot of people uh, went to save a uh, pilot. Mm -hmm. uh, and was, uh, and we can see uh, di different uh, air aircraft and uh, we can see uh, on the left side of photo uh, there is uh, 65 that's a mm -hmm. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's a place for uh, watching on on the uh, flights for the process. Some kind of control post, right? Yeah, 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 we, yeah, we, yeah. we call it the conning tower. Co control tower? Conning tower. Wow, I know. <laughs> yeah, but con con means control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good decision for uh, aircraft, for army, and different uh, soldier uh, wear different uniform colors. Mm -hmm. And the F, I don't know who is F. Uh, this uh, purple uniform on the right and the right side, we can see uh, people with green uniform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Usually, wrote that F means flight crew. Flight crew. I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Flight deck crew. Yeah. yeah, actually, it's interesting. On aircraft, you have like a few like different departments, right? You have Marines, you have who captains who control the ship, and, the, and you have planes who control the air, and probably there are different departments. And yes, it's yeah, I don't, know, I don't know much about aircraft carriers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, in Russia, we, we don't have much of them, many, many of them. Yeah, I, I know nothing. Yeah, they, they say that it was an incident, the accident in the air, some jets collided, that's why it was an accident, yeah. Okay, let me flick through some to find the last one. Wow. <laughs> I, I wanted to find one with a, with a crew in the, in the water. Okay, this one probably, yeah. I remember this. Vola, could you please describe this one? Please start, I will help you. The, <clears throat> Mr. Ryan jump from the helicopter. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Where, <clears throat> with a rope. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Where he jumped? To mm. where? In a submarine. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he jumped into the ocean, I guess. So I remember it was an intense, mo intense moment. They had a, uh, how we call this, I don't know, the metal sink to, to grab him in, in the air. Uh, but it wasn't successful and he decided to, to, to jump. And a helicopter pilot said that uh, we have like seven minutes or something for fuel for seven minutes. So we, we, have, we have to return. It was an intense moment. Yeah. I like this. So I guess it's 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 all for today. <laughs> I'm talking share. Thank you all for coming. It's it's kind of pity that we did not cover the whole plot, but it wasn't impossible, I guess. <laughs> too many <laughs> too, many, too many subplots. Hmm.
Okay, thank you very much. We will choose something something different for the next movie. I don't know what exactly yet. <laughs> but <laughs> thank you, Teacher yeah. Lee, for your support. support. Yep. Bova, Bova has a nice virtual background. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Navy captain today. <laughs> very, very nice. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. See you later. Thank you very much.